uh, I would use my grandmother's family name, which is pronounced uh, Boyer uh, in Danish. So I was wondering what kind of Chinese characters should I choose here? And then I come across that the name of Lucian's father, Joe Boyi, had these two sounds, Bo E. And I said, okay, uh, I'm now confirmed that uh, you can use these sounds in Chinese language, but then which characters to use? This uh, Bo Shu the Bo uh, uh, related family, I thought that, that that was fine, but the E, uh, now what kind of E? And then a Chinese friend suggested to me that I chose the character E, Ju E the E, because it tells about one's attitude. I've had the privilege to uh, visit uh, all Chinese provinces and regions, uh, also uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong and uh, Macau. Cultural traditions and dialect and thinking and attitudes are different uh, all over China. And uh, this diversity, I think, uh, within one nation is the strength of China. There are a lot of livable places in China. China is a very exciting place to live, but uh, two places where which attracted me in particular. Number one, in the 80s, visiting Xinjiang Tulufan, uh, because that's a very special place. It's an oasis and uh, it's deep down in a valley and so on. It was a very lovely place and I, I, I've been there uh, twice. The other place was uh, Fujian Xiamen. It's in South China and the weather, the climate is very pleasant and uh, you have all the Haixian, the fish from the sea. You have the very interesting old Gulang Yu, uh, an old uh, island, and uh, there's a lot of history there, and it's very mild. I'm so fortunate that just before China started to modernize or uh, open up Kaifang in 1978, I visited China and also I, I lived in China. And uh, so I've seen uh, this huge change in, uh, in economy, in living standards and so on. There are thousands of impressions and uh, examples you could give, but let me only give one example, one figure. If you look at the rise of China's GDP from 1997 until today, China's GDP has increased 18 times, one eight times. And this is uh, uh, incredible. And um, the figure speaks for itself. And I think this is also one important reason for the uh, anxiety in Western world today vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. Uh, China is developing so fast. China was also an old, old and prosperous civilization with a rich uh, philosophy. China had technological innovations, stable and successful central governments. If you have a holistic picture of China and China's history, and looking back hundreds of years, then you will see that when China has a united, stable, peaceful and central government, it is possible for China to make use of China's <clears throat> full potential. And China's full potential is landmass, population, governance experience, education and innovation with the goal to increase the well-being of the Chinese uh, nation. I see at, uh, China as a large economy and a large responsible in, uh, civilization in the world are reaching out for global cooperation. This is an invitation from China for international cooperation and dialogue. All these uh, is all based upon dialogue and cooperation with other partners. And um, uh, so you could say that uh, they are connected to together the Belt and Road and GDI. Well, uh, overall, I think uh, this confirms the continuity of uh, China's basic policies. Uh, the 20th uh, Party Congress showed for me the stability of a well-performing uh, Chinese administration. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, uh, the title of the book is actually a Chinese uh, Sin Buddhist proverb, 
yin zhi er jian yue, meaning you point at the moon, which is China, the only thing that you see is your own finger, meaning that you don't see the real China, you only see what you have heard about China and what you believe China to be. Right now, there is in the Western world, uh, promoted by Anglo-Saxon media, there is a, a very, very negative narrative about China. The, the basic a- attitude is, is so that uh, that's the basic uh, a- a- attitude. That will change, that will go over, because the pendulum is going like this. Why is this? It is primarily, in my opinion, because uh, of a confrontational American policy to- towards uh, China. I think the Chinese people uh, should continue to tell fact-based stories, true stories about life and culture in China. Uh, in the last uh, 150 years, uh, there are only three Chinese people been able to, in a very successful way, to tell the story about China. There are three very different people. The one was, uh, he's not so well known in China. He was uh, called Chun Yi Tong. Uh, he was a Qing Dynasty diplomat. The other one was official uh, Gu Hongming. Uh, some people also know him. And then the third one is more Chinese people also today will, uh, will know the name of Lin Yutang. Both of these three people, they had a extremely and deeply knowledge of uh, China, uh, European culture and languages. They were uh, able to s- sort of think like a U- U- European and then explain actually in a European way uh, what is the essence of Chinese culture. And for all the three of these uh, people, uh, they were talking for the very uh, deep perspective of Chinese culture. And uh, when you read what they are writing and uh, telling about it to other people, even today, it sounds very, very modern. It shows also their, uh, not only their, their deep respect for their own culture, but also a deep respect for Western culture, for European culture, that they made the effort to explain Chinese culture in a European fashion. In European language, uh, I'm a member of the uh, board of the Zhu uh, Jia Xie Hui, and uh, which is a uh, in English it's called the the International Confucian Association. Uh, it's a very uh, high level uh, and a very interesting uh, organization, uh, and there's a lot of discussion of uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, philosophy. I've practiced Chinese cooking for 40 years. Actually, I am a reasonable cook making Chinese dishes. Uh, I have 25 favorite dishes. Chinese music I, uh, is very interesting. Uh, I, I like uh, Chinese cultures with calligraphy paintings and of course porcelain and Chinese history. Uh, Chinese history is, uh, uh, is so long and there are always new stories I've never heard about. And then I have to study these new stories, new persons, uh, new incidents, and uh, so on. Uh, that's uh, 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 Studying Chinese culture is a story never ending.